Hi everyone, I'm Isaac Ling, I'm a pastor here at SIBKL. And you know, now these days in the world, we, we hear of fights, you know, there, there are wars and rumors of other wars. You know, our wallets are getting tight, right? We, we talk about inflation, recession, you know, and some of us, we, we may have lost our sight, our direction. Where are we going in this life? Where are we going with this new coming out normal? I invite you, every single one of you, to our Good Friday Easter service where we're going to talk about from darkness into light, where we need to introduce hope, peace. What does it mean to have security in this world? What does it mean to feel loved in this world? I welcome you to our Good Friday event where we're going to broadcast it online, watch it with your cell groups, watch it with your friends, your families at homes, and tune in to our Easter services, three services on site and online where we will talk about the light of the world, Jesus Christ. I really cannot wait to see you there. God bless. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. 
Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Hi everyone, I'm Isaac Ling, I'm a pastor here at SIBKL. And you know, now these days in the world, we, we hear of fights, you know, there, there are wars and rumors of other wars. You know, our wallets are getting tight, right? We, we talk about inflation, recession, you know, and some of us, we, we may have lost our sight, our direction. Where are we going in this life? Where are we going with this new coming out normal? I invite you, every single one of you, to our Good Friday Easter service where we're going to talk about from darkness into light, where we need to introduce hope, peace. What does it mean to have security in this world? What does it mean to feel loved in this world? I welcome you to our Good Friday event where we're going to broadcast it online, watch it with your cell groups, watch it with your friends, your families at homes, and tune in to our Easter services, three services on site and online where we will talk about the light of the world, Jesus Christ. I really cannot wait to see you there. God bless.
If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
Hi everyone, I'm Isaac Ling. I'm a pastor here at SIBKL. And you know, now these days in the world, we, we hear of fights, you know, there, there are wars and rumors of other wars. You know, our wallets are getting tight, right? We, we talk about inflation, recession, you know, and some of us, we, we may have lost our sight, our direction. Where are we going in this life? Where are we going with this new coming out normal? I invite you, every single one of you, to our Good Friday Easter service where we're going to talk about from darkness into light, where we need to introduce hope, peace. What does it mean to have security in this world? What does it mean to feel loved in this world? I welcome you to our Good Friday event where we're going to broadcast it online, watch it with your cell groups, watch it with your friends, your families at homes, and tune in to our Easter services, three services on site and online where we will talk about the light of the world, Jesus Christ. I really cannot wait to see you there. God bless. As we get older, our eyes start to go through changes which affect our vision. The Medical Fellowship of SIBKL will be organizing an ophthalmology health talk with our three panelists, all of whom are experts and have years of experience in the field. Come listen to their insights as they give an overview of common eye conditions and how we can look after our eyes better. Hi everyone, my name is Miranda and if you're a college or university student studying on campus, I've got some good news for you. Our campus youth ministry is entering into a new season and we are now called Young Adults Campus or YAC. I'm so privileged to be pastoring this new YAC community. I really believe that God is birthing a next generation of God chasers with a different spirit who loves God, loves community and loves the nation. We'll be gathering for the first time together on the 8th of April on Friday at 8.30pm at Bangunan Yin. So follow us on social media or subscribe to our Telegram channel for our latest updates and I cannot wait to meet all of you soon. The Healing Ministry has started an initiative called Healing Truth, a podcast exploring the healing scriptures in the Bible through the lens of God's promises to us. Episodes will be updated and made available on Spotify. So go check it out now and be blessed. Reverend Franklin moves with the anointing of the Holy Spirit and the authoritative name of Jesus Christ. He is especially gifted and experienced in inner healing and deliverance, having set free more than 100 counselees. He will be speaking on the topic of exercising your kingly anointing in healing and deliverance in our upcoming El Piso session. So do join us for an insightful session. Looking for a place to chat, laugh, and connect? Alpha is a series of videos and small groups to discuss about life, faith, and meaning through the Christian lens. Come and join us if you are new to the Christian faith, or invite your friends who would like to connect and explore life. Since 2010, Stephen Chan and his wife Michelle have been helping couples strengthen and enjoy their marriages through speaking, mentoring, and marriage enrichment retreats. He is also the co-author of the book, Maximum Marriage, From Husband and Wife to Lovers for Life, and will be giving us an introduction and overview of his book in our upcoming marriage talk. Details are on the screen, so do join us for an insightful session One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. 
you can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Day Church and welcome back to our weekend service. So a warm welcome to all of you here physically. This is the first weekend without tickets. Yeah, come on, let's give God a big hand. You know, this shows that the doors are now fully, fully open. And God, we cannot contain God. God is gonna move in this place. Amen. So a warm welcome to those that are here physically and also those that are online. If you want to feel uh, belong, you want to feel that you want, you want to come back physically, the doors are open now, there's no more tickets, do come back to service physically. So if you are new here for the very first time physically, anybody new, first or second time, would you raise your hands in this place? Anybody new? If you are new, we have some gifts for you. We would like to invite you to connect with us at our connect counter outside. Do fill up a form and we have a gift for you. If you are new and you are watching this online right now, we would like to invite you to click on the link because we would like to get to know you. Do type in on the chat group as well, say you're new. And for those that are online watching, do welcome them. Say welcome to the church, welcome to the family, welcome to today's service. All right, so just to keep you informed, today is communion weekend. So for those of you that are here, when you walked in, you would have received your communion emblems, your elements, all right? So if you are here and you do not have the emblems, to raise your hands we've got communion men ready to give you the emblems anybody here that does not have your elements you have one person here anybody else upstairs everybody else has one one more over there all right thank you and those of you online you know because this is communion weekend we like to ask you to prepare a piece of bread a cracker and some ribena or grape juice because we will be doing communion later after worship so we are in the season of Lent right now. We are all fasting and we are all attending our Lent prayer altars. So we have Lent altars happening on Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday nights from 9 to 10 p.m. There is a bit of a pre-worship sometimes happening in the, in the beginning and towards the end. So do lock on early. And we have two more weekends to go before our Good Friday and Easter celebration. So our Good Friday and Easter celebration this year, the theme is from darkness to light. From darkness to light. And, and it's, it's very apt, right? Because it's really from darkness to night. God brought us out of darkness into light, right? Okay, I feel like I'm going to preach a sermon here. Better not, better not. Better not. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Good Friday. Good Friday is happening on 15 April at 8.30 p.m. And please take note that it's only, only live stream. Okay, so do subscribe to our YouTube. Do go inside all our social media. Follow our social media so that you can be updated. So 15 April, 8.30 p.m. Only live stream. And then on Easter, our Easter celebration, we will have three services. Three services. One on 16 of April at 5 p.m. The usual first, first service. The second one at 8.30 a.m. on 17 April. Uh, the third one on 17 April, 11 a.m. All of it here in Bangunan Yin. So if you are around, invite your friends. Bring them. Bring them because why? God is going to do something miraculous. He is going to bring them from darkness to light. Amen? Amen. All right, come on. Let's all stand up right now. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can be in your house this day. We ask, Lord, for your presence to be in this place. We invite you, Holy Spirit, come and be with us, Lord, as we worship you, Lord, as we lift your name up high, Lord, as we declare your word and as we listen to your word. We ask, Lord, Holy Spirit, move in this church. Move within our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Over to you. Well, good evening, church. Are you ready to worship God along with us? Yeah. You know, it's Lent, it's Easter season. We're going to declare God's amazing grace in our lives and in this church. So sing along with me. It's a familiar song, super easy. This is amazing grace. Ready, team? Let's go. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? mighty and so much stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole Worship Him today, we sing. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. There's no one more worthy. Worthy is the King who conquered. Yes, we adore you, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy are you, Lord. Worthy is the King who conquered. Yes, we worship. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave.
God is good. All the time. Come on, let's go old school a bit. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Come on, time. I love it. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is Come good. Come on, church. God, you have been so good to us. God, you have been so faithful to us. So God, we thank you that the doors are open today. And God, we pray that as we worship, that as we sing, that God, would you listen? And as you listen, we will, will, will our worship be a holy, will our worship be a pleasing sacrifice unto you, God? Because you deserve our adoration. You deserve all praises. You deserve all worship, God. Oh, we thank you, Chief. In the church, we're going to sing a, a fairly new song. Trust me, there's going to be a lot of words. Uh, the worship team knows. But I want to encourage you that as the words are being sung, to look at the words of the song and I pray that you meet Jesus and I pray that you see the grace of God and I pray that during this Lent season you will see that the Christian life we live it's all because of the grace of Christ I must worship the Lord what gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer there is no more for heaven now to give He is my joy My righteousness and freedom My steadfast love My deep and boundless peace To this I hold My hope is only Jesus For my life is wholly bound to Him Oh, how strange and divine I can sing all is mine Yet not I, but through Christ in me Oh, we thank you, Jesus Oh, we thank you, Lord The night is dark But I am not forsaken for by my side, the Savior, He will say, I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is To this I hold, to this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through Christ that is in me. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled, for Jesus bled, and suffered for my pardon, and he was made. To overthrow the grave To this I hold My sin has been defeated Jesus now and never is my plea Oh, the chains are released I can sing, I am free And not I, but through Christ Come on, we sing that again
church, let's worship. Behold the Lamb, set to shame on earth, in the name of love, so I believe. Behold my God, holiness display, all my debts are of love so I believe yes Lord we behold the Lamb we behold Jesus and we behold His beauty 
His holiness. And as we behold His beauty and His holiness, Lord, that You would work within us, Lord. That Your beauty will move us into holiness as well, Lord. Yes, Lord. My church, we're coming to a time of communion right now. But if you do not have an emblem, just raise your hands. Everybody else, remain your eyes closed. If you do not have an emblem, raise your hands. Our communion man will come and pass you on. But for everybody else, prepare your emblems. Those that are online, prepare your emblems right now. And in this attitude of worship, let's reflect upon God. The bread represents the body of Christ broken for us. You know, God instituted, Jesus instituted the Last Supper during the Passover festival. And the Passover festival is what happened when God brought the Israelites out of Egypt and that's why they celebrated the Passover festival. And through the many, many different miracles, signs and wonders that God brought into Egypt to show Pharaoh that He is God, one of the things that He brought was the angel of death. And the only way for the angel of death to pass over a household of the Israelites the Israelites were to take in a lamb. They were to take in the lamb and they were to dwell with the lamb. Or the lamb was to dwell with them, to stay in that household. And when the lamb is there, they would have to wash the lamb, clean the lamb, feed the lamb. And the lamb dwelt with them. This shows Jesus coming to earth, dwelling with us, walking with us in our day-to-day -day journey. And on a certain day, the Israelites were to take the lamb and sacrifice the lamb. Sacrifice the lamb. That's why Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. The lamb back in Egypt represented Jesus Christ and he said it this is my body broken for you because he knew that he was going to go to the cross and he will be the ultimate sacrifice the one and only lamb of God that will take the sins of the world they will take our iniquities our shame our illness our sickness upon him going to the cross dying for us on the cross and because he took all of this and on the third day he rose again he's victorious over death over illness over sickness over iniquities over shame so as we prepare to partake of the bread right now let us reflect upon what God did on the cross dying for our sins, taking every sin, every illness, every sickness, every iniquities upon Himself. And on the third day, emerging victorious over all of this. And because of that, we can live life and life more abundantly. Because of this, we have freedom. Because of this, we have healing. So we're going to partake of the bread very soon. And as we partake of the bread, let us declare, if you are not well, let us declare healing upon yourself right now. If you know someone that is not well, that is sick, let us declare healing upon them. On the night when He was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and He gave thanks to God for it. Then He broke it in pieces and said, this is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Let us partake of the bread.
the cup represents the blood of Christ shed for us, bled for us on the cross of Calvary. Back then in Egypt, when they sacrificed the lamb, they took the blood, they used the blood and they put it on the lintels, the doorposts of their house. And on that night, when the spirit of death came, the angel of death came, the angel of death passed over, passed over the household. You see, this is the blood of Christ that was shed to cover all our sins that has redeemed us where the, where the angel of death is supposed to come for us for our sins because the punishment of sin is death. But now, because of the blood of Christ, we have life and life more abundant. So as we prepare to partake of the cup, let us remember the blood of Christ that was poured out for us. This blood that covers all our sins. This blood that does not just cover sins, but redeems us into a people of God, redeems us so that we can come to God holy and blameless through Christ Jesus. And this blood protects us just like it did in Egypt for the Israelites. So in the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper saying, this cup is a new covenant between God and His people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until He comes again. Church, let's partake of the cup. Heavenly Father, we thank You for Your body broken for us. We thank You for Your blood shed for us on the cross of Calvary. Lord, we ask, Lord, that we will remember, Lord, what You did, that we will reflect upon what You did, and Lord, that this will move us. Lord, that we behold You. Lord, we are beholding the beauty of Jesus and the beauty of the cross of what happened at the cross, the transaction that happened on the cross for our lives. So we thank you, Lord, for this time. We thank you, Lord, for your blood and your body. We thank you, Lord, for this worship that has happened in this place. We thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place, Lord. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Church, you may be seated. Now I'd like to invite Pastor Jeremy up right now. Pastor Jeremy will be speaking to us today on Deuteronomy chapter 5. So over to you, Pastor Jeremy. Wonderful, wonderful. Praise God, praise God. Let's just give Jesus a big clap offering. Come on, everyone. Come on, I think you guys can do much better than that. Let's give Jesus a big clap offering today. Woo! Thank you so much, worship team. It's, it's really such an amazing atmosphere worshiping together, right? Especially for those of you who are here physically, and I'm sure online as well at home, it's an amazing atmosphere when doors are open and we can come back to the closest understanding of what normal is, right? This is today, I'll just speak with Pastor Lee Chiu. This is the closest we have gone to what we were so familiar before MCO. So it's really an amazing time. So before I start, let me just pray. Let's just, let's just pray. Father Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for this opportunity that we can even come together, that it is such a privilege and honour to be able to hear your word freely given to us, that today, wherever we are, Father Lord, allow us to just receive. Holy Spirit, would you just come? Speak to us. Let our hearts be softened to just hear what God wants to say to us during this season. So Lord Jesus, even as I'm speaking here today, Lord, I just want to give you all the glory and honour for this privilege to be able to speak your word in this timely season. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. Amen. Yay, yay. Yes, okay, let's clap. You want to clap? We can clap together. At home as well, let's clap. Yeah, it's an amazing time. Let's just be grateful to Jesus today. So just a little bit of uh, announcement since I'm here. Now that it's physically open for that church, all of you can just come in, right? I would like to also tell you that children ministry is also opening soon in two weeks' time. Yeah, as we celebrate Easter together. So remember, more information will come out uh, about how you're going to register because we still will require registration because we need the team to make sure that your children are safe. So this is just a little teaser. And because of that, I also want to highlight that we need more people to serve together with us because the children are there. They are hungry. They are waiting to receive the Word of God. But we need more people to help us share this gospel out to the children. So if you love children, you know, if just looking at them gives you a little smile, come and join us at the link there. Don't worry, more information will come out soon. So I would just like to extend this invitation to all of you. So Children Ministry is opening in two weeks' time and that we would like all of you to come and partner with us during this season. Yep, so that's a little bit of advertisement about the Children Ministry. So right now, let's dive into the Word. Are you all excited about the Word of God? Are you excited up there in the balcony, downstairs, at home? Excited? Give me a wave. Yeah, good. So right now, we are still in the series of which book? Yes, I'd like to hear some. We are in the series of Deuteronomy. And today, we're going to go into Deuteronomy 5, okay? And I've entitled my sharing today as The Greatest Commandment. The Greatest Commandment. You know, when you hear the word commandment, right? Sometimes we have a, a lot of different meanings of what commandment really is. So in, in, in simple English, like, because right now we rarely use the word commandment, right? Unless you're in the army, I command you, I order you. But in normal human day-to-day -day language, we rarely use this word. So to just make it a little bit easier, commandments can be said as rules, SOPs. We are very familiar with that word now, SOPs. Policies, yes, even now everything is kind of like open, right? Praise God, everything is open. But there are certain rules, certain SOPs that are still in place that we need to follow. So in, in that sense, like, commands is something like that. A set of rules that we want to follow. So as you have remember from Deuteronomy 1 all the way to 4, as Pastor Aaron shared last week, talking about obedience, being obedient to God, about that God is a jealous God and that God is giving an identity to the Israelites that just came out from Egypt and they are lost. They forgot, remember, they forgot their roots and therefore God is giving them an identity. And for them to have some form of an understanding about themselves, therefore rules was given to them to tell you, hey, you know, you guys, you are my people, you need to do this, 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 this and not do like them. This is you you follow the commandments that I've given you. So that is the context of where we are coming from, from Deuteronomy 1 all the way to right now. So as we go into Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 1, this is a very familiar verse. So I'm going to let's all read it together. Deuteronomy 1, chapter 5. So if you get over here, it's 22 verses. Okay, so read it strong at home as well on the balcony. It's been a long time since I get to hear everyone's voice. So let's speak it loud as we speak the Word of God. Ready? One, two, three. Moses summoned all Israel and... Okay, okay. All. Okay, if I can. All. Just like when Moses summoned all Israel, all Israel had to come. So right now, uh, it's not a command, but I would like all of you to read it together at home as well. All right, let's do it together. One, two, three. Moses summoned all Israel and said... Hear Israel, the decrees and laws I declare in your hearing today. Learn them and be sure to follow them. The Lord our God made a covenant with us at Horeb. It was not with our ancestors that the Lord had made this covenant, but with us, with all of us who are alive here today. Okay, verse 4. The Lord spoke to you face to face out of the fire on the mountain. At that time, I stood between the Lord and you to declare to you the word of the Lord, because you were afraid of fire and did not go up the mountain. And he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on earth beneath or in the waters below. 
you shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me. Let's go on, verse 10. But showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Verse 12. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. Verse 14. Let's go. Let's keep it strong. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it shall you not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your ox, your donkey, or any of your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns, so that your male and female servants may rest as you do. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out or there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Let's go on stronger. Another few more verses. Honour your father and your mother as the Lord your God has commanded you, so that you may live long and that it may go well with you in the land the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. Oops. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbour. You shall not covet your neighbour's wife. You shall not set your desire on your neighbour's house or land or his male female servant, his ox or his donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbour. Last one. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in a loud voice to your whole assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire the cloud and the deep darkness, and he added nothing more. Then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. Well done. You read 22 verses today. Wow, wonderful. <laughs> Ten commandments. This is something I'm pretty sure I can safely say for those of you who have gone to children's church or you have gone through any part of your spiritual life, whether in the two years old Christian and all that, I'm pretty sure you have heard the Ten Commandments before. And when we hear, yes, if that's yes, just let me sh- give me a show of hands at home as well. Good. A good majority, yes, up there. Almost 90% of us know the Ten Commandments very well or we have heard about the Ten Commandments. And Ten Commandments, actually, like I say, it's like a set of like policies or SOPs. It's actually the whole idea is to give us a, a roadmap. It's like a roadmap or a compass to tell us where you are right now how far you have gone off tangent or where are you on the right path. So it's, the idea is just for us to understand where we are. And that was the reason for the Israelites at that point of time, they had, in that sense, no rules to a certain extent. Rules were set by them they are, or whatever cultures they had in Egypt. But when they came out, God is telling you, telling them, hey, these are the 10 commandments I want you to start with to begin your journey of finding your identity. So it is like a roadmap and a compass. So coming to today, when we hear Ten Commandments, generally, if I can safely say, because I know all of you here are very good Christians, we will say, Ten Commandments, I think I generally don't do all this one. Uh, I, I, I don't kill, yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay. I, I don't do this, I don't profane the name of the Lord. I, I don't do all those. I come to church, you know, so I think... I'm quite okay. Based on the Ten Commandments that I read just now, I think generally I'm quite okay. Most of us generally have that mindset when we see the Ten Commandments. But is it true that when the Ten Commandments were shared to the people, was it just purely about that Ten Commandments? Is it just to tick off the Ten Commandments that I've done this? Hmm. Let's see how Jesus explains it. We're going to go into Matthew. Now, we're going to jump into the New Testament, and this is how Jesus explains it, okay? Here. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him, asked him, asked Jesus, a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Which one, Jesus? 
So Jesus, being a very wise person, said, Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. So which means the second one is almost is as important as the first one. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang the law of the prophets. Huh. Let me read it again. The highlight about you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and you have to love your neighbor. Jesus answered this lawyer who asked, which is the greatest commandment? There's 10. He was trying to trick Jesus, right? 10 commandments were given to the people. Jesus, out of these 10 and all the commandments, uh, which is the most important? Jesus, in a sense, expounded and summarized it to these two. Love the Lord and love your neighbor. So I'm going to put it into these two parts. Okay, if you can see, it's a bit small, but the item on the left-hand side is, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. And on the other side, love your neighbor. And under this two, as I was reading it and studying it, this is what I noticed. Why is that two parts? Because Jesus said, all the laws of the prophet lie on this, which is the Ten Commandments. How, how do I connect these two dots? And this is what I found out. Love the Lord. See the first part there? You shall have no other gods. Do not make for yourself an image. Do not misuse God's name and keep the Sabbath day holy. Second part. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Honor your parents. Do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not give false testimony and do not covet. As you see these two parts, do you see there's a certain theme to it? Both are, in a sense, important, but both are slightly different. And what do I mean by different is this. The first part is about men to God. Our duty as men, as an individual to God. If you notice the first part, there is nothing about another person. It's about the individual and their duty towards God. Man to God. The second part, you see, love your neighbors, which means there's some, a neighbor means it's like there's someone else, right? Honor your parents. There's always another person. Honor your parents, which means you need to have a father or a mother. Do not murder. In that sense, you don't murder yourself. That's suicide, different thing. There's always another person. And then look at it. Do not steal. You can't steal from yourself. You need another person. Do not give false testimony, which means do not lie. You need another person and do not cover it, which means you are looking at something else and you want it. There's two parts, two themes. That's how I understand. Oh, now I understand what Jesus meant when he said the greatest commandment is actually this too. Shall not love, you shall love the Lord with all your heart and you need to love your neighbor. And the 10, it comes into this. And a lot of people, if you like to do research, you know, this is what people say. There was two tablets given, right? Some people say, the first tablet is that one. The other tablet is this. Or some people say it's all 10 in one and duplicated two. There's no answer. There's no, in that sense, if you like to go and research, this is just a little teaser for you to go and do your research. But it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it was still the 10 commandments. Therefore, Jesus explained it this way, and today that's how we're going to look at the Ten Commandments, looking at, the both, looking at both themes. So the first theme, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind and your soul. Jesus, when he was answering that lawyer, he was not telling the person, you know, you know the Ten Commandments, because I'm pretty sure the lawyer knows about it. It is not about being so legalistic, as, as I shared earlier, checking off. One, two, three, four, five. It is actually about understanding the heart of God behind the commandments. Because being legalistic like many of us, unfortunately, are, we would say, we are quite righteous, I think. Just using, let's just use this category first. You shall have no other gods. Yes, I don't have any other gods. Jesus is my Lord in my heart. I know it. You shall not make for yourself an image. That's right. I don't have any image at home that represents Jesus. I rarely, or not rarely, I don't use all that vulgar words that uses Jesus' name. Like, oh my, oh, we, I don't say all those things. Quite okay, check. Keep the Sabbath day holy. I, 
I'm right here in church right now. I'm online. Praise God. Keeping the Sabbath late, holy. Yes. Check, check, check everything. I am quite good. That is what is written. However, if you understand the heart of Jesus when he explained it, he said it's more to just all this. It's the heart behind it. Then let me ask you, you might have kept all this and we categorize ourselves as good Christians. Let me just ask a very simple answer. That's not even here, a question. Do you read your Bible? It's not in the commandments, but do you read your Bible? And the answer is, oh, actually I don't, but I keep all this. So then, are we considered a good Christian in terms of our language? I kept the commandments, but I actually don't read the Bible. So how can we justify that? The idea is, what is the heart behind all this? What is the heart when the Ten Commandments was given and this first part is talking about man to God? It's about a relationship that we can have with Him. And in a good relationship, there are certain, in that sense, unwritten rules because when you understand the heart. And when we say, love the Lord, when we love the Lord our God, one word just comes to me, or one sentence, it means actually supreme devotion to God. Supreme devotion to God. Amen? It's very simple. When we use this word, supreme devotion to God, then it makes sense. Yes, reading the Bible is important. Honoring my father and mother is important. We do not become legalistic anymore of following the Ten Commandments. Supreme devotion to God. Today in our time here during the whole MCO, I know we hear that a lot. Things have changed, right? Life has changed. And some of us, we get distracted with the burdens and responsibilities in our life. Maybe some of you, two years ago, no children. Now got children. Praise God. Some of you, before MCO, not married. During MCO, married. That, ah, that's me, lah. okay? That's my category. <laughs> yes, must highlight a bit. My wife is there. Yay. Okay? Some of us, I, I'm not sure, maybe you had different job pre-MCO and now during MCO and now in that sense, post-MCO, different jobs. There's just so many changes around us. And sometimes, with all these changes, we get distracted that we say, ah, yeah, I can't give God my full devotion. I'm distracted with all this now. Have you heard of some people? Again, I'm not trying to step on anyone's shoes here today. I just want to share what the Word is really saying to me and to the church for all of us at this point of time. For some of us, Maybe there was a point of time in your life you were fasting and praying very hard for a child. God, give me a child. I can't seem to have a child because of this, this, and that. And finally, after many years of prayer, God bless you with a child and a healthy baby boy or girl. Wow, you praise God. Amen, hallelujah. You gave so much time to God with asking for that little child. But when the child was birthed, and as the child grew bigger, there were certain responsibilities that, come, that comes with bringing a child that we forget God and say, God, sorry, ah, I've got no more time for you now. My child is important. Yes, bringing up a child the right way is important. Do not neglect or forego your role as a parent. But what happened to God? when it was a little while ago, when you were praying so hard, you were giving your full devotion to God, God, give me the child. I love you, Lord. I've done so much for you. This is just my little desire. Can you just give me this desire? And God bless us or bless you with that. And then over time, we say, God, thank you. We, I thank you for your work. Now I need to focus on my child. How about a job? Pray for a job. God gave you a good job finally. Praise God. And then over the time, promotion happened. Different responsibilities happened. It, that comes with your work. We understand that's important. I'm not saying uh, throw away all that. No, those are important. But then we tell God, God, I'm taking a break from you for a while. I don't, I don't think I can commit just coming to church. No, not even about serving. Coming to church. Cannot really, Lord, sorry. Does that sound familiar? Don't, please don't point at hands. Again, I'm trying to honour and respect you and, but because this is what the Word says. 
keep the Sabbath day holy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. It was not love the Lord your God when you need Him only. It's love Him. Just love Him. I understand that sometimes it's tough. I understand. Things are changing so fast. But just remember, come back. That if, 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 if just say that it was a little prick in your heart that, hey, I think that was me. It's not about feeling guilty. It's about understanding that, hey, yes, I've gone off. I want to come back. I want to give my full supreme devotion to Jesus once again. That, that's the, why the Bible is there. That's why we come to church to listen, to remind ourselves. That's why we have communion sometimes. Remind ourselves sometimes because we forget. So today, it is about remembering that we need to love the Lord our God with all our hearts. When we love something or somebody, when we, you, you can see when a couple is in love. Recently, I went with a group of friends. We went to this uh, tea place, like those, you know, uh, tea life, that kind of place. Like, huh? So we, we, we ordered drinks and then we was going to a place and it was crowded. This company is very crowded with a lot of young people. We went there and I no, we noticed this. There was a couple, probably teenagers, la, late teenagers. I tell you, first glance, at one glance, I can tell that they were so in love. Why? Let me tell you, I do a bit of acting. So imagine this is the drink. So like that table, if you all can see, they were just like, they were looking at each other, and they were touching each other's face, uh, okay? Of course, appropriately, but then they're touching, like, wow. Then one drink, two straws. Huh. They were just like, wow. And then we walked past, there were so many people. But when we walked past, as do, uh, like they owned the whole place, and that there was no one there. Because there was no place, we tried to move through, they were all like, so focused on each other. If there was an earthquake, chung, everything was shaking, everyone would have run off, they will probably in their heart say, wow, being with you, my heart vibrates so much that I feel things are just shaking around me. Wow. They were so focused on each other. That is what, that is what exactly it means when we say, God, I love you. I want to give my full devotion to you. No matter what is happening around me, I still want to focus on you. Love the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul. It was not a seasonal thing. That command was something that they have to keep it in their heart. And if you read in verse in chapter 6, it says they are supposed to teach it to their children. It is something that they have to make it a second nature that comes naturally. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's the first part. Second part, love your neighbor as yourself. The second very important commandment that is also as important as the first one is this. Everything that you see here, there's always an element of someone else. Okay, it's not about self-love. It's about showing that love, that gratitude, or that care to someone else. Being aware. You see, it's impossible for us to say that, hey, I love my neighbor, but you are oblivious to your surroundings. It, it comes hand in hand. When we say, I genuinely care for my neighbor, I would take notice of the things that's around me. And because we are so used to the English word neighbor, 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 when we think, when you hear the word neighbor, the first thing that comes to your mind is this what? Our neighbor, those staying beside us, in front of us. And let's be very real, especially maybe in Malaysia. How many of you are super, super close friends with your neighbors? Hands up, please, at home as well. Ah, oh, okay. Surprising. One or two, one person just like that. Like, it's so. <laughs> it's okay, don't worry. Loving our neighbors, because we have a concept of what neighbor is in our minds, in our English mind. But the word neighbor actually in the Greek is a little bit different from our understanding. The word neighbor actually from the Greek is pleseion. Okay, pleseion, which means another person, whether from another nation, another religion, it just simply means another 
person, not just someone staying near to you or you're in close contact, it's just another person of another race or religion. And this is very, Jesus showed a very good example in the Good Samaritan. We don't have to turn into that. I'm just going to explain very briefly. In the story of the Good Samaritan in uh, Luke chapter 10, there was this Jew coming down from Jerusalem, and then he was robbed, whacked to the point that he was about to die, very injured, and he was on the floor. And this Samaritan came walking along the path, and he saw this Jew. So a little side note, Jews, and, Jews do not like Samaritans at all. Because why? They consider Samaritans are fake. You know, these people are like, no. To a point, they, they even use the word Samaritan as like a curse. Actually, at one point, I think if it's in John, someone wanted to call Jesus you like a Samaritan, something like that. But it, it was used to the point it's very degrading. So Jews and Samaritans, bongamwan. So, in the event like this, the Jew was injured on the floor and the Samaritan came. What did the Samaritan do? In the Bible, it says the Samaritan took care of this Jew, clothed him, brought him to an inn so that he, can be, uh, uh, he could rest, he could heal from his injuries and everything. This Samaritan took care of his neighbor, this Jew. And then he said the next day he gave the innkeeper some money and said, you know what, I'm going to pay all his debt, whatever, uh, medical fees, I'm going to pay it for him. I just want to take care of this person. And the word here, when, when uh, the, the Samaritan said he had compassion, that compassion actually comes from deep within. It's like the movement of your bowels. That is the actual word. Movement. When you have bowel movement, right, you need to go toilet, you need to go. That kind of thing, it's like, he had the compassion that I want to help, that I need to help. That is the original Greek. Yeah, it's not just I care for you. We use the word I care for you very simply, but the Greek gives different meaning. And that was the meaning from deep within the powers. He cared for his neighbor. And why Jesus gave the example? Because Jesus was like that Samaritan. He is that Samaritan, that good Samaritan, that he took care of his neighbors. Who were his neighbors? All of us. Remember the song just now the worship thing uh, sang that all my debts are paid. That's what the Samaritan did. He paid for the debts, all the debt of the Jew. That the Jew had not need to pay anything. He just need to get, be healthy again. The Samaritan did that. Doesn't that sound familiar that Jesus did the exact same thing? Everything. We were that injured person on that floor. We are lost. We had no future. Our lives, in that sense, are doomed without Jesus. But Jesus chose to say that, you know what? I'm going to help you. I'm going to pay all that. You don't owe me anything. I'm going to help you. Why? Because Jesus exemplified what it means to be a good neighbor so that we could follow after his footsteps. That was the greatest example that Jesus gave. And today, many of us in church especially, we said, wow, it's so good to help the needy. It is so good to give money to the poor. It is so good. Wow. And also many Christians think that it is optional. Many of us also think it's great to worship God. It's good to evangelize. But social compassion is optional. Unfortunately, many of us have that mindset. But friends, can I just humbly tell you and say what the Bible says that it is not optional. It is not. Loving our neighbor, as how Jesus explained it in the story of the Good Samaritan, it is not an optional thing. Let me go for another, a few, two more verses I'm just going to show, show you. First John 3, verse 16. This is how we know what love is. 
Jesus Christ laid down His life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. It's clearly stated in the Word of God. Love, not just with words or speech. Love with action. Do something. Another verse that this is very powerful, as I was reading it again, in Matthew 25, it says, Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see, uh, see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes or, and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? When? We didn't even see that, Lord. The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of, the brothers, of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Doesn't this immediately just say, friends, it's not an optional thing to do good works. When he says, love your neighbor, it is something for us to do, to show that, hey, I love you, that's why I'm doing it. And the thing is this, when, when, when we say doing good works, sometimes we have the idea, alamak, I come, now you're asking me, I really so i got so much burden on my life. Now you're asking me to do good work some more. Friends, can I just tell you, it is not about doing good works for merit's sake. It's not about, I have done good, oh, Jesus is happy with me now. Don't come from that angle. The perspective is different. We started by saying, love the Lord. When we say we love the Lord, our God, it comes naturally that we want to help others because it is an extension of our love of God to people. It's not about, I must do good works, I must do good works, therefore God is happy with me. It's not from that perspective. If we have that mindset, we will get burnt out because we are doing good works for the sake of doing good works. Just like an apple tree, when you see a tree that has a lot of good and healthy fruits, do we say that, wow, this tree is very healthy because that, ap that fruit made the tree uh, healthy. No, right? The fruit cannot make the tree healthy. It is the tree that is healthy. That's why it shows good fruit. Same principle. When we call ourselves a healthy Christian, if I can say that way, that we love God, we love God so much, and that we love Him with all our heart, what is the fruit of it? that we naturally extend His love to the people around us. It's very different from a merit-based good works. It is an extension. And Jesus said, don't make it just a lip service. Jesus went into the world of the individuals. He was concerned about the individual. He didn't just make like a, lip, a general lip service and thank you, bye-bye, no. If you read the Bible, Jesus goes into their homes, understand what they are going through. He went into their world. And I love this uh, uh, um, word by John Stott, a very famous theologian. He said, as Christ has entered our world, so we are to enter other people's worlds. Put yourself with loving sympathy inside the doubts of the doubters and question of the questioners and the loneliness of those who have lost their way. This entering into other people's worlds is exactly what we mean by incarnational evangelism. All authentic mission is incarnational mission. We are to be like Christ in, this, in His mission. We are to go and enter our neighbor's life 
of course, in accordance to the capacity that God has given us. You know, as I was preparing this message, why this message really speaks so much to me during this season. About 10 years ago, in 2011, I, I came to SIB and I was under uh, the mentorship of Pastor Andy. Who remembers Pastor Andy? Remember the previous student pastor? Yep, he's still my mentor till today. And it was one time that we were walking through the streets of KL because uh, Pastor Andy, at that point of time, he was doing a lot of community work. So I followed him all around. And then as we were walking, 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 and then I, I saw there was, you know, in KL, a lot of beggars everywhere, right? He was walking and then he went quite a distance and then he stopped. He turned back, and he didn't say anything. He just walked, walked, walked. He went to like a KK mart, bought some water, some bread, and then he went all the way back. Without saying anything, I just blindly followed him, and he gave it to that beggar and just said something, and he walked away. Looks like a very simple act. But that moment changed my life. Because I say, wow, that is really what it means to love a neighbor. And it was so inconvenient in that sense. You know, for us, sometimes even if that person who needs help is right in front of us, we already feel it's inconvenient sometimes, right? Let's, let's be honest. We have our life to go about. I understand. Andy went quite a distance. And that he was probably thinking about it during the whole time. And he thought, ah, you know what, let me turn back. Another distance he walked. Sometimes, loving our neighbor can be very inconvenient at times. But friends, can I just encourage all of you today? Let's have that heart for people because we love Jesus. And because that moment I had with Pastor Andy as he taught me that, that changed me to having an opportunity recently to be able to be with a group of people who are so amazing during the flood season. Do you remember that? That just happened recently. We had so many. I'm just going to show you a picture of them. There were so many people who gathered together to help. And during this time, was it a convenient time? No. Was it because they wanted? None of them knew that I was going to show this picture because none of them did it with any form of, oh, okay, yeah, uh, that's me, that's me, you know, I did it there. No. They did it because they wanted to bless the people as an extension of their love to the people, their love of God to the people. And, this, and it's not just about that time. And during this whole period as, as I'm in, in SIBKL, we have so many opportunities. You can see over there, even with Life Center, I had the privilege to be with Life Center to serve the people. We have amazing people like Vincent Chia over there. We had even, uh, if you see the medical team there, we have Dr. John, Dr. Chai, a few of the doctors. And Pastor Chiu was there with us on the ground as well. I was so blessed and honoured to learn from these people what it really means to extend the love of God to the people. They were really showing the meaning of loving their neighbour. Friends, remember, as we slowly come to a close, doing all this, it is not about to add more burden on our shoulders. It's not about that. Because we say that I've been trying my, my best to try to live a, 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 a good life, a well life, a, a, a successful life in that sense, if you can say so. Or maybe not even a successful life. I'm just trying to pass by life well. I got no time for this. Lord. I'm very sorry. I really want to. It's not to say that, you know, we, we, we hate God or I totally don't want God. I don't think we are in that category. For us at this point, maybe we, like you said, we maybe are just a little bit distracted by the things that's happening around us and we just want to put our focus on our life to have our life decently well, then Lord, I will come back and serve you. I understand. But maybe friends, maybe we are going about it the wrong way because in the end of Deuteronomy 5, it says this, you shall walk in all the way that the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live and that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land that you shall possess. Maybe the actual order of having that well life is to put God first. 
Because that's what the word says. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these things will be added to you. Maybe we've got our order wrong. We are trying to get our life well first. Then I serve God. The word says this. Obey my commands first. Do the things that I've commanded you. Then it will be well. As we have heard before, Pastor Chu has said before, the genius is in the order. And the order is what? He said, obey the commands. And what is the command again? Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second is like it. It's like it. Let's all read it together. And you shall love your neighbor as your Self. Wow. Wow. Many of us at this point of time, maybe we just got the order a little bit wrong, probably. Today, can I just encourage every one of you? Let's get that order right. Love the Lord with all our hearts, and then as an extension, we will love others, and with that, our life will go well because the word says so. And therefore, the Ten Commandments actually is the greatest commandment. All of it is the greatest commandment. I know in English it sounds a little bit weird, but the greatest commandment is all of that. It's not about picking and choosing. It's about understanding the heart of God. I understand, you know, that maybe during this period, some of us, we say that, you know, I want to help others. I really want to. That's really my heart. I love Jesus. I want to help others. But maybe there are certain doubts that you may have. Maybe you said, oh, what if I give? Uh, they misuse the money. Uh. They misuse all these good works I give. Uh. Don't you think Jesus knew that when he died on the cross, people would have trampled on his blood. People would have taken advantage of his sacrifice. Don't you think Jesus knew that? He did. Maybe we might say, this is my time. I got time. This is my own money. I need to do things for myself first. You know, and it's, all, it's mine. It's mine. Why do I need to give it to you? You should be working hard for it. Yes, to a certain extent, it's true. Don't you think if Jesus had said, this is my life, it's my blood, why do I need to do it for you? If he had said that, where would we be today? Jesus showed what it means. He did that because why? He loved the Father and he loved us. Friends, today, even as we come to a close, I just want all of us to remember. Remember the order that we need to love God first. We need to love God first. Maybe for some of you, or some of us today, you really love Jesus, actually. You love. It's not to say you don't love. But there's just so much distractions in the house, wherever you are. And you find it is so hard, Lord. I can't give my supreme devotion to you. I'm just so distracted. And you need that first love again to say, Jesus, I love you. I actually really love you. I want to come back to you. I want to be faithful to you. I want to pray for you if that is you. Okay? And the second group of people is this you feel that during this season, you need to forgive someone, a neighbor. And the word neighbor is not just the neighbor that we know. It could be a family member, a friend, that you feel that ah, it's just so hard for me to just say I care for this person. Don't people say love? It's so hard for me because this happened. He did this to me. He did whatever the person may have done to you. I feel deep in my spirit that God is saying, forgive 
don't let this person be a, a, a baggage, an anchor from you to move forward. And one more category of forgiving. Maybe some of us today, you need to forgive yourself. I'm not sure, as I was just talking, that's just what I felt that maybe Jesus has already forgiven you for whatever has happened. He has forgiven you, but you just can't seem to forgive yourself for whatever reason. I would like to pray for you. So these three groups of people, you want to come back to that first love. You want to love Jesus again. You want to love, uh, you, need, you want to forgive someone else and you want to forgive yourself. Can I invite all of you to just stand even right now? If that is you, in one of those three categories, can I just invite you to just raise both your hands as a sign of surrender, like, Lord, this word is for me. I want to come back to you. And the order is, we want to say, I love you, Jesus, first. No man, besides everything, let's come back to the order to say, I want to love you. Just raise up your hands as the worship team just sings this song. Let it be a time that you just reflect on what God is speaking to you right now.
Lord, today we just want to remember to say that, Lord, I want to love you. I want to love you with all my heart, my mind, and soul. That, Lord, as I love you, Lord Jesus, would you come into my life? Show me. Show me, Lord, how should I extend your love to the people around me? Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have first shown it to us what it means to love your neighbor. You sacrificed, you took away all our debt. And then, Lord, we want to just say, we love you. So, Lord, for the people who wants to get closer to you, Lord, today I just pray it's going to be a new, fresh beginning for them who wants to come back to that first love with you. And for those, Lord, that you are telling them that they need to forgive certain people in their life, Lord, would you just give them that courage, give them that, even that opportunity to even show that love through forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, for today. Wow. Thank you, Father, for your presence. We just want to honour you and glorify you. Even as we go home, we pray that your peace will be with us, that, Lord, your face will turn towards us, that, Lord, your love, your joy will follow us wherever we go. And that, Lord, we can celebrate your goodness in our life. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus a wonderful clap offering. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for those of you who are physically here and online as well. If you need prayer, do join our online altar call. It's open and people will be there to pray for you. And for those of you here, if you need more prayer or you just need to talk to someone, some of our pastors are here as well and we would like to pray for you. Thank you so much and we'll see you again. Bye. Thank you for joining us for service today. If you would like someone to pray for you, head over to the link and our pastors and leaders would love to pray and connect with you. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. Hi everyone! Would you like to get to know SIBKL a little bit more? If you've ever had such questions like, how can I join a cell group? How can I serve in a ministry? How can I be discipled? How can I be a member? How can I join one of our SIBKL events? Or any other questions, then I invite you to click on the link below and we will connect with each other via WhatsApp. One of our Connect leaders will reach out to you. We would love to connect with you, so we invite you to connect with us. God bless.
Hi everyone, I'm Isaac Ling. I'm a pastor here at SIBKL. And you know, now these days in the world, we, we hear of fights, you know, there, there are wars and rumors of other wars. You know, our wallets are getting tight, right? We, we talk about inflation, recession, you know, and some of us, we, we may have lost our sight, our direction. Where are we going in this life? Where are we going with this new coming out normal? I invite you, every single one of you, to our Good Friday Easter service where we're going to talk about from darkness into light, where we need to introduce hope, peace. What does it mean to have security in this world? What does it mean to feel loved in this world? I welcome you to our Good Friday event where we're going to broadcast it online, watch it with your cell groups, watch it with your friends, your families at homes, and tune in to our Easter services, three services on site and online where we will talk about the light of the world, Jesus Christ. I really cannot wait to see you there. God bless. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-love items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. Yeah. 
Hi everyone, I'm Isaac Ling, I'm a pastor here at SIBKL. And you know, now these days in the world, we, we hear of fights, you know, there, there are wars and rumors of other wars. You know, our wallets are getting tight, right? We, we talk about inflation, recession, you know, and some of us, we, we may have lost our sight, our direction. Where are we going in this life? Where are we going with this new coming out normal? I invite you, every single one of you, to our Good Friday Easter service where we're going to talk about from darkness into light, where we need to introduce hope, peace. What does it mean to have security in this world? What does it mean to feel loved in this world? I welcome you to our Good Friday event where we're going to broadcast it online, watch it with your cell groups, watch it with your friends, your families at homes, and tune in to our Easter services, three services on site and online where we will talk about the light of the world, Jesus Christ. I really cannot wait to see you there. God bless. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunanyin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to Level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information.
Hi everyone, I'm Isaac Ling, I'm a pastor here at SIBKL. And you know, now these days in the world, we, we hear of fights, you know, there, there are wars and rumors of other wars. You know, our wallets are getting tight, right? We, we talk about inflation, recession, you know, and some of us, we, we may have lost our sight, our direction. Where are we going in this life? Where are we going with this new coming out normal? I invite you, every single one of you, to our Good Friday Easter service where we're going to talk about from darkness into light, where we need to introduce hope, peace. What does it mean to have security in this world? What does it mean to feel loved in this world? I welcome you to our Good Friday event where we're going to broadcast it online, watch it with your cell groups, watch it with your friends, your families at homes, and tune in to our Easter services, three services on site and online where we will talk about the light of the world, Jesus Christ. I really cannot wait to see you there. God bless. If you're new to our church, do fill up your welcome card so that you can redeem your free gift. If you've parked in Bangunan Yin, don't forget to validate your Touch and Go card. One of the DNAs of SIBKL is to be a generous church. It is now so much easier for you to give. You can give via online banking transfer or do it now transfer. All you need to do is to scan this QR code and it will lead you to our giving page. You can also drop your tithe and offerings in the box just outside the sanctuary. It is because of your generous giving that we can be a blessing to others. Do you have some pre-loved items to give away? You can donate to Bless Ministry Collection Point at SMCC. You heard that right. Not Bangunan Yin, but at SMCC. Head up to the car park to Level 1A and drop off your donation to share your blessings. Scan this QR code for more information. 